All right, it is time to talk about the last five films I've seen, or five of the last films that I've seen. <laughs> hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is the fourth in my series of talking about the last 25 movies that I have seen. Um, I decided to do this randomly, and I just put the 25 films on a spinner, and I've just been spinning the wheel and talking about the movies. This is an effort just to get back in the habit of talking about movies without having to feel the pressure of it being perfect. It is certainly not being perfect. Um, so these are very like off the cuff and as best as memory serves. And yeah, and eventually I will get caught up. We're very close to it. This is the fourth in this series, which will be five. So it is the penultimate edition. So let's see what the first title we will talk about will be. So I did edit down the wheel so that we wouldn't have any repeats. Okay, Bird Box. Okay, this one's actually quite popular. I know most people will be familiar with this title. Uh, this is a Netflix original movie starring Sandra Bullock. It is the uh, book to film adaptation. I'm trying to remember who wrote the book. It is not coming to me at this moment. I haven't read the book. It's a thriller. Um, and the movie, I guess, is kind of like a horror movie, survivalist movie. I actually decided to watch this because I am watching all of the films by the director, Susan Beer. Um, and um, this is directed by her. She did After the Wedding um, and uh, like the original After the Wedding, there was a remake. Uh, Brothers, um, she directed The Night Manager, she directed this TV series The Undoing, which I haven't seen yet, and so this year I picked two directors and two actors that I'm trying to see more of their work, and Susan Beer is one of those four people. So, and I'm close, this is my fourth out of five that I'm aiming for, and I think I'm stuck because I think after this, um, there isn't any of her films that are available in the services that I use or in, I might be going back to simply um, the films that are now in Danish and that don't have as much availability here. And I've seen some of them, but not all of them. So anyway, she's formidable, formidable director. So, but with Bird Box, um, this one, I gotta say, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge favorite. I'm having a harder and harder time with certain kinds of horror and thriller movies, especially survivalist films, and this is definitely that. So this one, it, there is some event um, where if you, if it's, you can tell by the blindfold, there is an event that happens and seeing something um, is the trigger to impact the individual. And I'm not going to say more than that. Um, I wasn't, like one, I'm having challenges with survivalist films and this might be the last one um, that I watch this year or longer. I just, I've never really enjoyed them. They deal with a lot of themes that I find very, very hard and I've seen a lot of them. So I've seen a lot of the themes over and over again. And so there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of um, the, the, the strain on if people are going to be horrible to other people is just, I find too much. I just don't, I just don't feel the need to see that anymore. I don't feel like this handled this badly or anything like that. I just felt like I just, I just don't want to see it anymore. That being said, is it a good thriller? Yes. Is it a good movie? Yes. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the storytelling style and the fact that it goes back and forth in time, um, because that I find, alleviates some pressure, you know, and um, I'm sure some people like that, um, uh, or maybe don't even notice that. Because like, if you see something in the future, it influences how you interpret the current circumstance. And so that may, you know, and there can always be misdirection, but I don't know. Anyway, also wasn't a huge fan of the resolve in this one. That's probably more on the book. I thought it was incredibly... Maybe I'll just say I wasn't a huge fan of it and just leave it there because I don't want you to be spoilery in any way, shape, or form. I never like to talk about films in a spoilery way. So, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a fan. Honestly, it was a bit of a downer that this ended up being sort of like sort of the last one I had access to. But also, you know, it uh, I left it to the end. I do think I am going to try and watch The Undoing, uh, which is a six-part series that's on HBO or here in Canada on Crave, um, be, and count that as my five out of five for Susan Beer. Um, and I guess I do need to double check the availability of her earlier works, but I think I've seen everything I have. I've definitely seen everything I have streaming access to. Uh, after that point, it would be purchasing 
um, and I don't want to do that too much for my film goals because I have like 30 film goals. So I have to do more research there. So let me know. Have you seen any films by Susan Beer? Have you seen After the Wedding? It is so good. It is so good. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, let's see what the next film is. Mm. The Ape from 1940. Okay, so this is definitely, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is one of the films that I watched from my 50 horror classics collection that I'm working my way through as one of my bonus goals for the year. It's a bonus goal because I feel like I've gotten enough value from the movies I've already seen. So I'm working through my own unseen films, but I, that's a, a bonus because I've already got a lot from that. Okay, so this is from 1940 and it stars Boris Karloff and... This, I'm trying to remember the plot of this one. It does not have anything there. Um, yeah, I didn't have too much of a strong impression on this one. It does, if I remember correctly, feature... It's a sort of mad scientist-ish type of situation. He is, a, if I'm remembering right, which I might not be, but I think he is a doctor who is trying to help... Uh, uh, he's not very well uh, re received or respected in his community, but there is one uh, young woman who is in a wheelchair that he is trying to help and uh, and has been having success with. So the community sort of is not, like he's not does not have most people on his side, um, but de he definitely has uh, you know her on his side. I don't it, this treads in some challenging territory in terms of uh, you know, um, morals, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but that's actually sort of kind of like the point. Um, but, and then also there's a carnival in near town and, uh, sightings of an ape and, you know, and attacks and things like this. So yeah, the, actually, I guess I do remember this too well. It didn't have, like, this was not, this was a little better than I expected, but then, it also wasn't great, but it's also one of those horror movies that's a bit more of a, a drama and then has some like horror horror moments. So it was it was fine. I don't feel strongly about it sort of one way or the other. I thought it could be a lot worse <laughs> than it was, to be honest. I was worried where it was going. All right, number three, The Curse of La Llorona. So more horror. Okay, so this one was a total random watch. Um, it was available on Netflix. It's a horror movie from the past couple years. Okay, it says 2009 for the DVD. So the past, you know, three years. Um, this one sort of, it's kind of like based on a urban legend, kind of, um, and, uh, and then follows, but it is historical. Like they did set it. I think in the 80s, uh, which often I find horror movies are set in the 80s, uh, in part for nostalgia, but I think also in terms of tech. I think people often want to have tech be not what it is now, right? Like not, you just pick up your cell phone kind of situation. Um, but I actually thought it was done quite well. I like the woman who played the lead, who I can't remember, and it doesn't say here, Conjureverse horror film. I guess it's by the directors of The Conjuring. Oh yeah, the, from the producers of The Conjuring. Yeah, like it had, like I thought tonally it was good and that it was um, better than I expect. Not actually, mm, I watched this one in two parts, which is not a good way to watch a horror movie. Um, and so the first part, I like, I wasn't super sold on it. And um, it is about um, sort of children that seem to be potentially be mistreated and or go missing and stuff, which is a tough topic generally, but also currently. Um, so that definitely impacted my viewing of it. Um, and then, uh, um, and then when I came back to it, I was like, oh, you know, it actually ended up being a little bit better than I expected. And I think it's based on why I say it's urban fantasy or, or like an urban legend kind of thing. I think it is based on a particular, I don't know what the right term would be, but like folk, uh, tale or, um, like, or, or what's the right term? That's not like a, like urban fan, urban, in, in books, it would be urban fantasy or, or mythology based. Like it's based on a particular story. Um, and so, yeah, that is, um, or legend, legend, maybe urban legend, but not urban. So what's the right word? I'm not sure. Anyway, so this one for me was kind of like somewhere in the middle, like in terms of a horror movie, like, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, uh, the timing for watching it wasn't great for me. Um, and the, um, but it wasn't 
super good. Like it wasn't as good as The Conjuring, um, but you know, it was good, but it was a bit of a tough watch. And some of the things were like, uh, like, you know, um, so I don't know, I guess I'm kind of, kind of in the middle on that one. Um, and just have to chalk it up to the fact that the, the, the timing wasn't great. It wasn't so much on the movie, but in terms of horror movie, it was a pretty good horror movie. Um, not my favorite, but you know, it was pretty good. All right. Number four. Ooh, bird box. We already got that one, right? That was this video, right? <laughs> The Great Race. Okay. All right. So this one I have to pull up why I watched it. <laughs> the Great Race. Uh, so this one I watched on Canopy. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It is just... Um. Okay. So this is for one of my goals this year is to watch films that won the Oscar for... Uh, Sound effects. This won the Oscar for sound effects. So this stars Jack Lemmon, Tony Cur Curtis, and Natalie Wood. It is from 19... When was it from? I didn't write it. Um, does it say? Oh, there we go. 65. 65. And it is uh, a farce. Okay, so this is like a satire... Um, it is over the top. This is like watching a comic come to life and it is very clear cut sort of like who's who and what's going on and that kind of thing. So, um, and we have, I can't remember who was who, but we have, um, you know, the person we're supposed to cheer for and the villain we're supposed to like go about and then the woman who comes into it all. And it is historical, um, uh, from the time. So it's set, it's, was from, it was made in the 60s, but it's from, I don't even, I'm not sure when, like cars being new kind of thing. And it follows a great race. Like they, these are two um, guys that uh, always uh, are at odds with each other, always one wanting to win over the other, but it is ridiculous and over the top. Like literally the defies logic in terms of the things that happen physically and I was just watching it going like <laughs> what like I, it was like a cartoon come to life it was so over the top and I and I watched it it was on I was on Hoopla and it wasn't going to not be there anymore I think this is actually one of the set that actually wasn't there anymore I watched a whole bunch in a, in a sort of week before they said they were going away and this one actually did go away um yeah, so it's and there 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 is some commentary on 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 women and and uh, uh, well we would say feminism, but they they were talking about suffragettes um, and because um, Natalie Wood was going to enter the race as well and could she or couldn't she and they had to and she was sort of like the ploy between them of, of all like just comedy of errors in a lot of sense there was some inappropriate. Um, uh, stuff in this one in terms of indigenous peoples though so be uh, forewarned for that uh, that was quite a, in my opinion very just it, it is a comedy but it, like it went one direction I'm like okay that's pretty bad and then it went further and then it went further and I'm like okay it's gotta stop <laughs> and it did and it wasn't a huge part of it but I was just just no just no so yeah so it was an experience um uh it was a very strange film to watch with no context <laughs> but that's sometimes what happens when I watch things for goals um and it was long it was uh two and a half hours or maybe three hours so it was also quite an ordeal there were some pretty impressive moments and the visuals are stunning and I don't some of the things that they did were extraordinary and I'm not surprised that it won for sound effects but yeah so that was a bit of an unusual one wow how I talked about five one two three, four, only four. Wow, I do not have enough time. I'm going to leave it here for now. And then I'll talk about six and the last one. So sorry, f number four is going to have four films. Um, but I don't want to have these videos be too long. Let me know, have you seen any of these movies? It was a very strange set. I actually have to say this might be the set where I didn't enjoy the movies very 
very much. So maybe that means that we have a lot to look forward to with the final installment. So thank you so much for watching and I will be back soon with another video. Take care.